Hi, this is Manos Berlakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 9 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case of presumed minoca, that is myocardial infarction with normal coronary arteries. The patient was a 66-year-old man with no previous history of coronary artery disease, who developed sudden onset chest pain and dyspnea, and uh, was found to have ST segment elevation in the lateral precordial leads, as well as the inferior leads. Therefore, the cath lab was activated and the patient underwent emergent coronary angiography. To our surprise, we did not find any occlusion. He did have TM3 flow down the LAD as well as in the circumflex. On different views, there was again no area of significant stenosis and there remained TM3 flow down the LAD as well as the circumflex. And uh, looking at the spider view, there was TM3 flow in the LAD. There was maybe some diffuse disease in the diagonal branch, but no significant obstructive lesion. We then went to the right coronary artery with a guide, just because we presumed that the patient would likely have a culprit in the right coronary. But once again, there was no significant angiographic stenosis. What is the next step? One option is to declare this as myocardial infarction with normal coronary arteries and do no further investigation. But the patient did have pretty typical symptoms and EKG findings. Therefore, we were wondering whether there was some lesion that maybe geographically was not readily apparent. We therefore performed optical coherence tomography. We wired the right coronary artery and then uh, did a run which did not demonstrate any area of ulceration, any thrombus, or any potential culprit lesion. We then went back to the LAD and this time we did find in the middle AD an area of ulceration with thrombus and a thin cap fibroatheroma. So it's actually not, an, not a case of minoca, but instead the patient does have a thin cap fibroatheroma with cap rupture and formation of thrombus. And this corresponds to this area that retrospectively does look a little ulcerated and hazy. But of course, before it was hard to call that before we had the information from optical coherence tomography fairly discrete plaque, and there remains some area of um, fibrotheroma further down in the same vessel. Once again, we now look at the images retrospectively. That area may appear suspect, but of course, it is always easier to call things retroactively than proactively. Because of that, we decided to stand. There are some cases in which patients undergo just antipetal therapy without standing. But in this case, we thought there was an ulcerated plaque and it would be best to implant a stand, which was done, and optical coherence tomography done afterwards, demonstrated a nice result with a good stand strata position. There was good stand expansion, as expected, given the lack of calcification. There was still some minor area of thrombus uh, protruding through the recently placed stand, but overall it was a good result, which um, we accepted. And um, uh, the patient had a nice um, um, recovery. Retrospectively, there was an area of staining distally that most likely was due to distal embolization and staining of the thrombus with a contrast. But in the end, the patient had an uneventful recovery with a nice final angiographic result. So the main lesson from this case is that in patients who with presumed ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, before declare them as having minoca if, they can, if the angiogram does not show any obvious culprit lesions, it may be best to perform intravascular imaging, ideally with optical coherence tomography that has the highest sensitivity for intracoronary thrombus, and look for things like distal staining that could be due to distal thrombus embolization. And although medical therapy can be considered for some of those patients who have a TM3 flow at baseline, in the presence of an ulcerated plaque, Placing a stand is probably the safest option. Thank you.